Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode Economics with Georgia. And today we will discuss about economic indicators with abbreviations GDP, GNP and GNI. Uh, all the links that I'm using today you will be able to find in the description of the video. So, what do we mean by GDP, GNP and GNI? GDP, gross domestic product, could be expressed as total income value of goods and services produced in a country. Uh, it represents everyone's income and what they spend in that specific country. In economic terms, GDP is the sum of investment, government spending, net export and consumption. GDP represents country's output, expenditure and income. When GDP increases means people spend more and businesses are expanding, creating economic growth. It does not capture the money from abroad, how many times money changes hands, and how money is split in among the population, and that would be the inequality level measurement. GNI, gross national income, is GDP plus net receipts from abroad. The net receipts from abroad represent income from employees, property income, and net taxes minus subsidies for production. Um, employees represent people that work abroad but send money to their home country. This amount is known as remittances and many countries such as Philippines, for example, receive it and reuse in, the nation, in their econ uh, national economic progress. Gross national product, GNP, is the total amount of uh, goods and services produced uh, by people of a country, both nationally and abroad. It counts the investment of the residents both outside and inside the country. It does not involve the income that foreigners make in the country. So what are the advantages and disadvantages using these three economic measurements? Starting with GDP, uh, the advantages of GDP is that um, it is easy to calculate and it is a formula used to monitor economies around the world, offering a broad comparison among more countries. GDP per capita offers the possibility to understand how the country's economy is approximately split among every resident. On the other hand, GDP does not include social indicators such as quality of life, unemployment, inequality. So when I say inequality means uh, the wealth between the rich and poor. In some countries, the inequality level is high, such as Ecuador or Brazil. It also doesn't include education level, transparency. Uh, it doesn't include the money made from the informal economy or by the residents that live abroad, which is encountered in countries such as Nigeria and India. The nominal GDP per capita does not capture inflation rate, where the real GDP shows the real growth per capita, incorporating the growth and inflation together. GNI gives a bigger picture about the income that the country produces, incorporating money that come from abroad. Um, it helps to analyze some social indicators, such as migration level, unemployment, and productivity. GNI and GDP tend to be equal for uh, bigger economies, such as US, where GNI is 21.3 trillion US dollars, and GDP is 20.9 uh, trillion dollars in year 2020. However, countries that receive foreign aid have their GNI indicator much higher. An example is East Timor, where the GNI is 2.4 billion dollars and GDP is 1.8 billion dollars. In Ireland, due to multinational companies that export profits to their home country, GNI is lower than GDP. So GNI is for uh, 308.4 um, billion dollars and GDP is 418.6 billion dollars. All of these are indicators for year 2020. 
However, GNI does not cover inequality levels and informal economy. Uh, it is measured in US dollars and does not capture the different price levels among the countries. GNP, on the other hand, uh, measures the standards of living as it shows the relationship between the consumers and firms that produce the goods and services. It covers the marginal utility for the consumers. The marginal utility is the additional satisfaction a consumer gains from consuming one more unit. The market price is equal to the marginal utility when in equilibrium, and therefore the aggregate value of a bundle of goods and services is equal to the monetary expenditure, the money spent by the consumers. Alternatively, GNP uh, does not capture all the indicators of a society. Uh, if GNP increases overall, it does not show the median, how it is distributed among the people. As the indicators above, or the ones that we mentioned before, it does not include social factors such as education, health, and environmental impact. However, there are some alternative um, measures to, to analyze the economic performance. Many researchers show that it is better to monitor the economic, social and cultural development of a country using multiple indicators. For example, Zimbabwe is considered a low-income country, but 84% of the people are literate. China, being a high-income country, struggles uh, in generating pensions due to one-child policy that decreased the population growth. Uh, and this measurement is not captured in any economic measurement. And this is why we can't just look at economic factors to measure a country's success or failure. The Human Development Index, um, HDI, is a summary uh, that measures average achievement in key dimensions of human development. So these are a long and healthy life, being knowledgeable and have a decent standard of living. The advantage of HDI is that it captures social indicators together with the economic performance, giving a wider perspective about the country's overall picture. The only downside about HDI is that it only captures health and education. Some other components such as poverty rate or inequality, environment, could be added as well. Going on, Gross National uh, Happiness Index uh, was firstly developed in Bhutan in 1972 by the King Jingme Singhi Wangchuk. In 2011, United Nations created the first World Happiness Report, where countries are ranked follow, uh, following six indicators. Real GDP per capita, social support, freedom to make life choices, generosity, perception of corruption, and healthy life expectancy. This index incorporates more social parts, but could be attributed to the national picture rather than individual, presenting a much bigger picture. PPP, purchasing power parity, could be another indicator used to show sp specifically the economic performance of a country. Compared to GDP, GNP and GNI, PPP incorporates the different levels um, across the countries, different price levels. Price level is what one dollar can buy you in different countries. So for example, one dollar in US can buy you one bread, however, one dollar in Jamaica buys you five loaves of bread. It adjusts the nominal GDP to the price level through PPP and presents a more objective indicator of a country's performance. This proves that until the present day, GDP remains the main indicator of economic performance for PPP. The social indicators should be considered for a bigger, fairer and definitely clearer picture. So, out of the measurements that we discussed, what would be the main choices? 
From the details that we discussed, World um, Happiness Index and report could be a reliable measurement when looking at the overall well-being of a country. It incorporates economic measurements and has additional social factors, giving a large view about a specific country. But factors such as generosity and social support could be interpreted differently among the countries, being my third choice. HDI, on the other hand, uses internationally established metrics of economy, education and wealth, which makes it more reliable when it comes to comparison. It uses GNI per capita as the economic indicator, which makes it biased in some way. PPP per capita could represent uh, could represent a better choice for future. GNI uh, involves money that residents send from abroad, however, does not include the money that foreigners make in the country and send to their homeland. This could exaggerate or downsize the economic image, where GDP looks at the income produced locally, balancing out the amounts that go in and out of the country. PPP is based on GDP and is adjusted to the price level in specific countries. Calculating PPP per capita might provide a better objective and clearer view, making in this way HDI and PPP per capita my first two choices. So, coming to conclusion, economy could be measured in different ways. But it is clear that overall well-being of a country includes other factors such as social, environmental, cultural, technological as well. You could look at other indexes as well, such as Transparency International, Transparency Index, to look at the level of corruption in different countries. Later on is GNI. The GNI, co uh, the Gini coefficient shows the income inequality, so how the overall economy and wealth is split among the population. Later, we have the environmental performance index that tells us how countries perform in terms of pollution and uh, conserving the planet and the environment itself. By looking at more indexes, will help you to increase your view about the country's well-being. But about this we will discuss in some upcoming videos. Please support the channel on Patreon for early access to this series. Like, comment and share and subscribe. This is episode 2 with Economics with Georgia. So I'll see you in the next video.